Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about the five things you need before keeping Toke geckos. This is going to be a mix of pretty much the essential items you need to make sure that your animal thrives in your care, while also some little things here and there that I found really help out and what the Toke really enjoys. So with all that being said, I guess it's time to sit back, relax, dive into some Toke geckos and roll the intro. this list we are going to start with number one a proper enclosure for the toke now i know what you guys are thinking D dakota really that that this is what you're making now oh they'll do a top five list of toke needs number one enclosure really L listen just hear me out real quick I, I i gotta fill some slots so number one it is a slot filler i'll be honest however just well, get into the other stuff as well. When we're talking about a proper enclosure for a toke gecko, I'm looking for three main things, or we are gonna dive into three main things. Uh, that being enclosure that is big enough for the animal, an enclosure that has enough arboreal space for, of course, an arboreal gecko, and then number three, an enclosure that is able to retain and hold humidity. Now, the two best things that come to mind when it comes to these type of enclosures are going to be either somewhat of the Exoterra or Zoomed brands, there's a variety, you know, 18 by 18 by 24s, uh, even 18 by 18 by 36, and both brands and also, of course, the other one being a custom PVC enclosure. I will say the Zoom and Nexus here do have their pros and cons. Uh, as far as the pros go, I do like the front ventilation as pop uh, with the uh, screen ventilation up top, so you can seal one but still have ventilation still going through. Uh, this is something that the Zoom has and the Exoterras have over something like an aquarium, uh, where you can seal the top to retain that humidity, but there's still some airflow and some ventilation going in there as well. However, while I think this enclosure is great for the keeper, I do not recommend this enclosure for the breeder, and there is one simple reason why, just because of the fact that the opening glass doors, they have that gap and within that gap it is just big enough to make a gecko from about just hatched out to six months of age go through the gap this has happened to me many times i hate them i i hate breeding animals in them they're a nice enclosure but it is such a pain wrangling toke gecko babies babies that are this big and then they run out of the enclosure and then you got to chase them so for the keeper i think they're awesome for the breeder probably wouldn't recommend it. What I think works great in both experiences of the keeper and the breeder are gonna be some custom PVC enclosures. Um, any type of brand, you know, AP cages, I believe uh, Vivos or Vision cages make some, uh, maybe even Zen Habitats. Yes, Zen Habitats, people. A two foot by two foot by two foot enclosure. Wow, that would just be the dream for, uh, wait, the uh, sorry, the sponsorships are at the end. My bad, my bad. Yeah, pretty much the first thing you're gonna need, of course, to properly take care of your animal is gonna be an adequate enclosure, meaning some that's big enough for the large Large geckos, of course, them being uh, Toke geckos being the second largest gecko species, you're gonna want a pretty good amount of room. Want to make sure you have that height in there so they have that arboreal nature to be able to climb while also having one that retains the proper humidity that the animal needs to thrive. But moving on, let's get into the next topic at hand, which of course is going to be number two proper hides for your toke gecko. There's one thing toke geckos love more than biting their owner, it's gonna be hiding during the day. Of course, with these guys being surpuscular, they're not really out during the day. They like being out more of the time of dusk and dawn. That's where you're gonna find them most active. With that being said, during the day, they like to hide. Uh, the best hiding thing I've found for toke geckos is really going to be some sort of tube hide. Now, there are multiple materials you can find with these kinds of hides. Uh, if you're going for a more naturalistic, bioactive, planted look, I would recommend something like the cork tube hides, even some bamboo hides. They work great and really look nice and make the enclosure look nice. However, if you are one again, one of those breeders out there, um, I don't recommend the cork hide because it is such a pain getting the babies and the adult, or separating the babies and the adults because they like to hide together in the cork and can't get your fingers in there. The fingers that you can get there, they're gonna get bit. That's just that's just how it is. If you are one of those people and you're looking for more of a practical use versus something that looks aesthetically pleasing, I really found that these large PVC tubes you get, something like an inch and a half plus, uh, I think there's even greater ones out there. Uh, they really work great. It's a nice tube where the animal feels secure, but it's large enough where you can get your hand in there instead of this tiny little cork that you gotta, you only wedge like two, this doesn't look right. That That's not appropriate, I'm, nope. Well, depending on what kind of enclosure you want to set up for your animal, I highly recommend one of those hides because they're going to work great, your gecko's going to enjoy it and feel a lot more secure in that hide. Getting into the next topic on this, let's get into it right now. Number three, 
proper heating for your animal. Now, as we all know, Tokyo geckos are not going to be like your average New Caledonian species, which really means just temperate uh, temperatures anywhere from that 70 to 75 is that sweet spot. No, Tokyo's geckos prefer it a lot more warmer. Uh, with that being said, you're going to need some additional heating supplement to, in order to obtain those temperatures. Now, this can be found in a multitude of different things, uh, ranging from your standard basking bulbs, ceramic heat inhibitor, ceramic CHE. Radiant heat panels and even just using ambient temps by themselves. Uh, personally with me with owning around 20 toke geckos it um, Using just your regular basking bulbs just it, it doesn't work um, My electric bill was about $600 a month when I was doing that method and my god I just can't afford $600 a month So I actually ended up switching to ambient heating I just dedicate an entire room to the toke geckos and within that room I keep temperatures around 80 to 88 degrees uh, spinning out throughout the season a little bit colder during winter a little bit warmer during the summer months uh, I found this works great. The animals not only have the proper temperature to digest, but I save a little bit of money with not using basking bulbs. It's a it's a win-win situation, is the real thing. <laughs> if you're not the guy like me that owns 20 Toki geckos, you only got one little dude, you want to get the best for him, um, there's a couple different ways you can go about it. Each one has its pros and cons. As far as a basking bulb goes, it's awesome getting that UVA in there as far as the heat goes. However, if you're not using any sort of dimmer or thermostat plugged in, it can be a little difficult, a little bit more of a trial and error, making sure you get those temperatures exactly right. Versus if you use something like a radiant heat panel, in that case, that would be plugged into a thermostat that you'd be able to achieve the exact temperature that you want and it would remain at that temperature. While I believe you are using a reading heat panel, it is important to have some other supplemental heating, whether that be a standard CFL, UVB light, or anything like an LED, just to make sure that they are getting those UVA rays in that day and night cycle. A definite pro to using a reading heat panel versus a basking bowl is the fact that, here's the thing with basking bowls, man, they burn out. God, do they burn out so, so fast. I have so many basking bulbs and it seems like every day one burns out at least. So I'm buying just 20 basking bulbs at a time in bulk. Um, I don't have to do that using radiant heat panels. That is a big pro for saving money. So UVA and heat in one, not spending a bunch of money on basking bulbs once every couple of weeks, choice is yours. <laughs> Getting down this list, we only got two more things to go over. So that's gonna bring us to number four, gloves. Just gloves. <laughs> Don't be like me. Don't give into the peer pressure of people saying, oh, he wears gloves, he's a wussy. Just don't, you, you've seen me on the channel, man. You see what my hands look like at the end of these things. It's not worth it. It's really, it's not worth it. Just get some gloves, man. It's, it's, it'll be the easiest for you. It's less pain. Um, you're really, honestly, wearing gloves gets you a sense of confidence because you don't have that fear factor of getting bit. Um, of course, if you do it constantly, like I don't really wear gloves anymore, more the fact that I'm just used to the animals like being defensive and I kind of understand the animal a little bit better so I know how to handle it and um, a, a, a basic understanding not getting bit. Not saying it doesn't happen, it definitely still happens a lot, but it happens a little bit less than it used to. I think that's the main thing. But yeah, I think generally in the beginning especially, it works out a lot more in the keeper's favor to wear gloves. You don't have that uh, subconscious fear going on that oh my god I'm gonna get bit I'm gonna get bit it's so scary uh, if you're wearing gloves they don't do anything if they do bite you don't have to worry about latching on so you can just take the glove off uh, there's been a few cases where the animals latched onto me when I'm not wearing a glove and I just sit there for like 15 minutes with a gecko chewing on my finger it's not fun it'd be a lot easier if you wore gloves and that's really um I think that's about it. wear gloves that is that's tip number four to a couple of things we got we got a couple good good things on this list a couple of things that are really common sense but i decided to add them anyway because making a top four just doesn't sound as good as making a top five but that is going to lead us to the last thing on the list for today which is going to be number five having a calm uh, what, what's the word oh man oh this is just awkward having a calm... patience having a pa pa patience damn it Having patience for your toke gecko. It for her. So that did do well. That was not, this wasn't good. <laughs> now being patient with your toke gecko is really going to be a must. Of course, toke geckos just in generally, instinctively, they are very defensive animals and they don't warm up to people um, as much. There are the oddballs in some cases that for some reason just don't really have that um, defensive personality where they want to bite, lunge, they don't really have the confidence to hold their ground, they're more flighty. Uh, I have some that are just completely calm with handling. They're, it's like handling any other like gargoyle or crested gecko. Uh, those are very strange. I think those are the ones I'm most scared of because 
I understand, like, oh, okay, this Tokigeko's defensive, I can read the signs, you know, I understand this animal. I don't understand Tokis that aren't, aren't like that. I don't understand a Toke that just is in my hand. I think that's the most scary part. It's like the anticipation of this animal is gonna bite me. I know it's not really calm. So I think <laughs> that's the real threat right here. When a Toke Gecko doesn't look like it wants to bite you, that's when you have to watch out. Gaining Toke's trust, man. It's a uh, long waiting game of trust, communication, and patience. Um, you gotta give the animal some time, man. Just doing some little stuff here and there, making sure you have everything you need. Um, yeah, that's a uh, patience. Patience is key. That is the big thing. Well, I guess that's it. All right, guys, and there you have it. The five things you need before keeping Toke Geckos. But now it's your turn. Let me know in the comment section. Did you have all these things? You know, did you get all these things going in Toke Geckos? Or were there some things that you're like, wow, Dakota, a proper enclosure? I would have never thought of that one. <laughs> Leave me a comment in the comment section. Did you have all these five things or did you only have six of these things? You have one extra that I didn't even think about. Uh, write, write them down. And of course, as always, huge shout out to Zen Habitats. If you're unfamiliar with Zen Habitats, they make enclosures like this one right here. Wow, what an incredible looking enclosure. I did mention a little bit earlier, however, I kind of wanted to save the spiel till the end. Of course, Zen Habitats has a beautiful two foot by two foot by two foot enclosure. It would be the perfect thing for toke geckos, especially because they have that screen top still, so you're able to utilize some basking bulbs or even putting down a radiant heat panel and some UVB, LED, anything like that that. Uh, the animal would really appreciate it. It would not only look great, just incredible. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good looking enclosure, man, and it works great for the animal. What more can I say? If you want to learn more about that enclosure or potentially buy one, you can find it right down there in description at the link below. And speaking of description, we've got all that other good stuff. Of course, you want to buy animals from me, you can find me on Facebook. You want to see some cool animal pictures, Instagram is the place. We got TikTok where I frequently post a bunch and then don't post any more of. We got merch. We got cool t-shirts, man. We also have Patreon. Patreon.com slash DVCB Exotics, where you get the up-to-date updates on everything that's going on within my business. This is definitely the time where you want to become a Patreon member. We are doing uh, just a it's breeding season. That's really the thing. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff going on. Aki monitor's pregnant. Uh, Argus monitor's gravid. They're not pregnant. They're gravid. I don't know why I said pregnant. Uh, we got crested gecko eggs being laid. Toke gecko eggs hatching. Gargoyle eggs being laid. A bunch of stuff is going on right now. Of course, ball pythons. We got ball pythons, people. We got so much stuff. So much stuff on Patreon. You don't want to miss it, folks. Ball pythons. If you want to learn more, go to Patreon. It's a dollar a month. You see ball pythons. You've never seen ball pythons like this before people your name your name gets to be in the outro the one we're rolling right now why did i yell that was uh, let's roll the outro roll, credit